Hey everyone. Good morning. This is going to be a weekly live stream that me and Mel are doing. This week it's on my channel and next Sunday it's going to be on Melissa's channel. So Mel, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, definitely. You know, so I'm really excited to do this because as some of you guys might know, you know, Lizzie and I are partner channel. So we have been talking about trying to do something like this for some time because, you know, we're both, you know, some Disney lovers and we're both Disney collectors. You know, I collect pins. Lizzie, you know, collects plushes, but we also like Funko Pops and things like that. And I feel like we're always talking about our collectibles. So I'm really excited to do this every week with, Liz with Lizzie. This week, you know, the first episode on her channel, then next week on my channel and so on. So it's going to be at 4 p.m. UK time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we're talking Disney World time. Um, and then, uh, well, my name is Melissa. My channel name is Geek now with Mally Mel. I live in New Jersey um, and I love Disney and uh, my home park is Disney World in Florida. I am an avid pin collector so that is my thing. As you can see there are some pins behind me. Uh, my main collection is Beauty and the Beast and I also have a secondary collection which is Jessica Rabbit and I also like um, Disney castles and I also collect Funko Pops as you can see here. So I think it's just all part of being just like a Disney uh, collector, you know, hence, you know, our, our show, uh, the Disney collector um, chat. And obviously you all know that I am plush pretty much um, exclusively, but I do also have Funko Pops, but they are all packed ready for the move now. The only things that are left that aren't plush are my pins. Yay, pins! <laughs> I'm leaving them until last because I saw when Ryan at Din Disney Pins blog moved, he just took them off the wall and like stacked them in his car. So I'm going to try that. Hopefully they won't get damaged or anything. Uh, I see um, Jody, uh, the Jody and Laura life are calling you the plushy queen. And it's true. <laughs> I love that. that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Can you highlight their comment, Lizzie? So if you click on the right hand side where it says plushy queen, queen, there's like a little plus sign and it should be able to let you, there you go. Ah, there and you then, go. yeah, and then to remove it, you can just click on it again and you can do that with like everybody's comments. And I yeah. see that uh, one of you Mouseketeers is here. Hi, Disney Dan is here. Of course, Jody and Laura live. I am pretty sure that I saw they trip in Disney, you know, Cameron, our pioneer. Thank you guys so much for being here. We're both so excited. Thank you. Uh, very first episode and um yeah it's like we are international today i mean we are yeah like dan I mean, said bam <laughs> <laughs> we've got people saying good morning we've got people saying good afternoon what I time know. Is it? <laughs> i know it's like you know lizzie you live in my future because yes, it's it um <laughs> it's 11 something in the morning here um uh, yeah. in uh, new jersey how's your day going um so far how was your weekend do you do anything this weekend it wasn't too bad. Um, we've just been packing. So yesterday I did some of my plushes, but it honestly doesn't look like I have. Um, I've put them in boxes and I've put them like underneath the plushes. So it actually mm. looks like I've got more now. Um, and then this morning I did all of my traditions. My mom helped me. Um, and then I think after today's live stream, I'm going to do those animator pencils with the little figures inside because I've got quite okay. a lot of those. Oh, so that's the next job. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But I mean, it's always good that even though you're packing, you still have a lot of the stuff that you enjoy. So I'm assuming you're just going to pack yeah. this less, right? Because you can enjoy. I see a lot of Sully's over here because Sully is yeah. like your main collection, right? Pretty much, yeah. And that only started when me and Joe started dating. Um, okay. The Christmas of 2015, he bought me this one. Oh. And I didn't have many Sullies. I think I had about three Sullies. Okay. Um, and then it just sort of snowballed from there. Um, I just started buying Sullies wherever I saw them. I bought a Sully on Friday. So that's going to be coming hopefully maybe Wednesday. Um, and, yeah, they've got to be packed, but I wouldn't. I think they might just go and have a sleepover at Joe's rather than going in the moving van. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah. Aww, They're like really cool. sentimental. 
Mm. Oh, I've got a question. Um, I don't actually know. <laughs> so um, I've done some videos, some packing videos that you'll start to see because I figured I'm doing quite a lot of packing and it seems a waste not to film it. So um, like you get to see some more of the plushes that aren't here and aren't up there. So I think when they all get taken out, I might need to actually have a video where I count every single one, but there's hundreds. I really think there's hundreds, <laughs> especially when you take into account Christmas ones. I think I've got about 30 or 40 Christmas ones. Um, and my Samsung videos, I've gone up to the 300s and I'm not finished. So there might be about 500, 600 Samsung's as well. So what would you, what would be your, your advice, let's say, because with like, when it comes to like storing your plushies and displaying them, like I know with me, like I use display cases for my pins or I do something yeah. like this. And then I have some other pins that are in like a pin book. And um, so there's different way of storing them, especially when you have so many that you have to get creative. So what would yeah. you suggest uh, to someone that is, you know, starting to collect plushies or someone that feels they have way too many plushes they don't know where to put them like what do you suggest because i i know you have you have to display them differently like i see some up um there with like in like little like boxes so what yeah. would you suggest to someone would be the best way to display and store like plushes that's a really good question because obviously there's like the classic plush hammock which i took down last week mm -hmm. i was telling you about that um, I really like just putting them on top of a wardrobe or a bookshelf. Um, I'm not so much a fan of putting them in bookshelves because I find that if they're all different sizes and shapes, um, I don't like the way it looks, but other people achieve that better than me. Um, those some some containers are literally yeah. um, drawer dividers that you're supposed oh. to put in your drawers for things like underwear and things like that. So okay. they're really easy to get. They're like this very thin fabric, so they don't like pull on the wall. It's not like a wooden shelf or anything. Um, and they're going to be really easy to take down because I'll just remove them as they are, maybe wrap them in um, cling film, which I believe you may call shrink wrap or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that the, they don't like roll around. Um, and obviously there is... There's like a box at the end of my bed that's like um, a storage box. I think they're called Ottomans. And then there's actual zipped bags that are in there as well. So hmm. I keep my plushes stored inside it so that it can kind of act as like leverage to make the plushes um, just get as high as I want them, I guess, because I used to just put them from the floor level and bring them up, but then you can't see what's on the floor. Um, so this room's evolved. I've lived here for eight years and the bed used to be where that um, plush is. Um, and then my bed is in the middle. So all of the plush used to fall off the sides of the bed. And I was like, I need my plush against the bed, like against the wall on the bed. Mm -hmm. So then I created this. And there's a bookshelf hidden in there as well. So there's loads and loads of books that I need to pack as well once I finally get to there. But it's a problem for future Lizzie, I think. I so did you like re did you go like Pinterest or something to like get ideas? Okay. Or did you just were were you just like, well, I should try this? Did you did you look anywhere for like some ideas or it's just Well, with the bed, that was more me just thinking of a way to put them. And I did say to Joe the other day, I didn't have this many plush when you met me, did I? I went, you're kidding, you really, really did. You've always had your bed like that as long as I've known you. Um, but with the um, Samsung, mm -hmm. I saw someone had bought like um, a hexagonal shelf. And I know um, Emily, one of the Mouseketeer, has one of those as well that all her Samsung's are in. But I had this really thick bookshelf. And the Sumsums were in there, but the Sumsums had to have pillows behind them so that they weren't too far in the bookshelf. So when I found these from Ikea, I just thought that's a much better alternative than having to have pillows inside the bookshelf. It just looked ridiculous. But it's also really good because I know that I can replicate that in my new house. Like yeah. the, the push, the push mountain's actually going. It's not, 
I, I don't think I'll be able to do it in my new house, like where I want my bed to be and stuff like that. But my son's sons will stay exactly the same, which I'm very happy about. Oh, that's awesome. And Ikea always has like some awesome like prices on like stuff. Yeah. Like um, we always get the glass cabinets that my traditions are in from Ikea. And yeah. I'm also going to get a new bookcase, I think, just for things like my traditions that don't go in cabinets because I have quite a few that don't fit in the cabinets we already have. Yeah, like um, I, it's funny because I just started collecting gym shores. I only have three, so I want to get some more. Oh, <laughs> that's the one I sleep with at the moment, but it changes oh. every day. But I mostly know. him. Oh, that's cute. I saw that uh, Jody and Laura said that you have uh, two thousand three hundred and nineteen. <laughs> I love that. I, that would actually be really good if I did. Like, if you put together all my plushies and all my thumbs, I might actually be able to hit that figure. And then oh, I have go. to swap out plushes to make sure I always keep that figure. Uh, Sully would be so proud. Yeah, he would. <laughs> or yeah. he'd be screaming at me, who knows. I've True. seen your um, gym shorts, haven't I? You've got Beauty and the Beast ones. Yeah, so uh, I did, you know, the Gadgets and Gizmos of Plenty uh, collaboration, which you're doing next month too, right? Yeah, yeah um, I haven't filmed the video yet. I'm doing it next Saturday. Yeah, same here. So it's a collaboration that, uh, you know, the Sisketeers put together with a lot of, you know, YouTubers that are into collectibles. And basically, we just show um, a different collection every month. It doesn't have to be Disney. So I'm excited to see what you're going to show. Um, so this is a monthly collaboration for the month of June. I showed my gym shores. And yes, I have three uh, Beauty and the Beast gym shores. And actually, talking about the Sisketeers, they're here. Morning. Um, so I'm really excited about but this collaboration because I feel like it embodies what being a collector is all about, not necessarily a Disney collector. So if you collect, you know, shot glasses or or magnets or whatever, you can still share your collection because at the end of the day, we are uh, we're all we all collect something, you know. Yeah. Like I've really wanted to do my Harry Potter Funko Pops. They are actually. Mm -hmm at the moment but I figured um for a future video that would be a really good one to do because I don't usually do much Harry Potter content on this channel even though I'd like to and I do have quite a lot of Funko Pops in the beginning I had all of the Harry Potter ones but when they started doing convention exclusives yeah it was harder to get so I don't have that anymore I think that's awesome. And I think that, yeah, you should totally do that, maybe for the gadgets and gizmos, because I, that collaboration, you can just show whatever. And I feel like Harry yeah. Potter is so popular and also so popular within the Disney uh, YouTuber community. Like a lot of yeah. like Disney YouTubers really like Harry Potter. I haven't read the books and I've only seen, I think two of the Harry Potter movies, which is, I know it's like blasphemy. Yeah. I haven't, <laughs> you know, I haven't, I haven't seen the rest, but you know, I love going to Universal Studios and going to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter because once you go there I feel like you just get transported to this whole you know yeah. different world and um, even if you haven't watched the movies it'll make you want to watch it or read the books yeah. or something like if I'm being honest first time I went to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in that Universal I had not seen the movies so when we went back to New Jersey the first thing I wanted to do is just watch the movie so we saw yeah. you know the first and second movie just because it's so cool so I definitely think that uh, you should show that I do think that it's such a cool fandom. There's so much merch. I mean, not only the Funko Pops, but, you know, the wands, which I think it's so awesome that you yeah. can uh, pick your own wand and just feel like a wizard yourself. Yeah, I've got two wands. I've got a wand that um, they sell in the UK that's like a replica company. And then okay. I've got one of the ones from the Wisdom World that, um, like, when you wave it, it sets off the sh uh, store windows. So I didn't get the exact same ones. So I made sure I've got two different witches ones, but um, they haven't been packed yet. I should have really packed them with the Funko Pops, but I just didn't want to. I like having those out just in case. Oh, that's awesome. I, I mean, when I went to the Wizard and World Harry Potter, I really wanted a wand even though I hadn't even watched the movie. I'm like, this is so cool. I need a wand. And then I know they have the interactive ones there at Universal yeah. that you can kind of like interact with like the different display windows. And of course, that's an expensive one. And I was telling my husband, I'm like, I want that. And he's like, you haven't watched the movies. And I'm like, doesn't matter. This is like so cool. It doesn't matter at all. <laughs> um, I didn't get it, but I do want a wand. I think it's so cool because I'm such a dork and a geek. 
<laughs> I'm quite surprised you hadn't watched them until then, but I think it's quite a generational thing because I grew up with Harry Potter. Like, um, I think I was still in primary school, so for you, like elementary school, when Harry Potter came out. So it's just sort of been such such a big part of my childhood. Um, I had the books read to me when I was younger by my dad. So that's how young I was when they came out. They were actually too advanced for me to read by myself. So my dad read them. And then when I left school, I read them for myself again. And it just, it made more sense reading it to myself because you forget things when it's read to you. Yeah. So, I'm pretty yeah, sure I went really with school. Better. Yeah, because it came out of what in it's what is it like the late nineties or early two thousand? Yeah, because I remember I think when I got into it, it was on book number four, so I was quite late. Oh yeah, because I, I if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure I was still in school when the books came out, and like some of my classmates were reading it, um, and so so if it was in the late nineties, then I was uh, in high school. I graduated in 2002. I know, I'm like so old, Lizzie. No, you're not. <laughs> uh, but, but either way, I mean, I think the Harry Potter fandom is awesome. And I love the wands and I love the Funko Pops. And um, I, um, I love seeing, you know, the headbands, you know, because there are so many people that do them. I actually have a, a good friend that has a really cool um, Harry Potter uh, headbands inspired um, Etsy shop mm -hmm. got, called Geek Couple Cute. Um, she was featured her on a channel from the UK um oh, oh was it is there someone named Cherry in the UK oh um Miss Cherry yeah um, I, I watch her quite a lot actually I think it was her so she featured my friend's shop I gotta find the video and send it to you and I was so happy for my friend uh but anyway her headbands are like so cool and I was just like I, I'm not like a hardcore Harry Potter fan, but I need one of those headbands. They are so cool. <laughs> but yeah, it's one of those fandoms where it really draws you in because it's so magical and there's like a whole world that's been created around oh, yeah. it. Like usually like our Disney movies are set somewhere that already exists for the most part. So, you know, the world's already there, whereas this world's been completely created. I mean, it's still set in England, but like it's a part of England that doesn't actually exist. So I just think that's really magical. Yeah, like uh, when you go and you get on the um, Hogwarts Express and you do this thing and you go to London, I love it because I just feel like a world traveler every time yeah. I go there. I'm like, oh my gosh, I went to London today. <laughs> Which yeah. I, I have you know, so many of you that need to come to the UK. I was just going to say that. I, I, I would love to go to the UK at some point and of course, I gotta, you know, visit you and um, Andy and Joe over at Park Pioneer. You know, yes, yeah, so we we got a plan for that. Mm -hmm. But you know, before I forget, you know, we can't stray too much from this. We gotta talk about Minnie Mouse main attraction. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I am so heartbroken that it got postponed in the U.S. because you guys get it on the 18th of the month, right? Yeah. So for I've always all thought that's best as well. Like it makes more sense to just say the eighteenth of every month rather than yours is the third Saturday, isn't it? So right. I find that a little bit confusing. I know because that's how it was with other collections like Mickey Memories and Disney Wisdom. Yeah. They were doing it the third Saturday of the month. Um, so, but I do think that is is really well organized to it or like you said like a set day the 18th of the month yeah. so i was so looking forward to this release because even though i am not a peter pan collector i think that this month's collection was so pretty like i love the colors and i was really looking forward to this and then when i saw it was postponed i was just so heartbroken and mm -hmm. um there's not even like a date yet of when it's coming in the u.s and then you know because i am five hours behind um you know so it's uh so your release was at 8 a.m so for me it would have been like 3 a.m so in the past i have been able to order from shop disney uk i ordered the uh bell jumbo pin that they have on shop disney uk oh, yeah. so which would that was ridiculously expensive with like shipping yeah. and everything oh my goodness but but whatever so 
I was like, well, I'm going to try my luck. I'm going to wake up at three in the morning. And even if I pay a lot more for this pin set, I really want it because I am collecting the set. And, and that's what I collect pins. So at 3 a.m. I went, the website was crashing. I kept on trying to add the pins to my bag. I added it. I added the pins to my bag and I was like, yeah, score. But then when I went to check out, guess what? Not shipping to the U.S. And I was like, what? So I stayed out from like 3 a.m. to 3.30. So it was like a, I wasted 30 minutes and then I couldn't really go back to sleep because I was already awake. But I was so bummed about that. Um, and so how, how was your experience with this month's main attraction? It feels like it's getting worse and worse, to be honest. And I didn't really agree with Shop Disney um, postponing yours and not postponing ours because if the stock is ready in the UK, the stock should be ready in the US. To me, it should be coming from the same place. Um, and then it seemed a bit weird that they understood that loads of people from America would come onto our website to order. So they gave us a window, but the window didn't even work for us. Like I didn't get onto the website till about 8.07, I think. And that was ridiculous because I'd been awake. At, well, not awake. I'd been on the website since 7.50. So I should have just been able to refresh and go on. Um, I had it open on my phone and my laptop, as I usually do. But for some reason, it was working better on my phone than my laptop. And I, I still can't understand that fully. Um, but it just, it keeps crashing at a different time. Like when I tried to get your income paint key, it kicked me out at payment. It actually kicked me out once I'd already gone through PayPal. And for instance, I'd already paid. So it just seems like there's a new hurdle every month to get through. First, you've got to actually get onto the website. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to find which search parameters will give you that specific item that you want. Like, for example, you don't just type in Minnie Mouse Domain Attraction as it usually doesn't come up. You usually have to type Mini and then sort by newest. And then mm -hmm. sometimes the pins won't be there, so you have to go pins. But it... We did manage to get everything that we wanted. Um, we did what we usually do. I get the pins because they sell out quick. I never go for ears because I don't wear them and the bag had sequins on, so me and my mom don't want it because it like scratches our skin. So my mom went, went and got the mug and the plush like she usually does. And we, I think by about 8.15, we got what we needed, but I ended up having to order another plush because I hadn't heard from my mom that she'd got the plush. So we do have two plushes, but my friend Emily, who's in the chat, is having the second plush. So at least I managed to help my friend out. That's but good. I just, I hate finding out that you haven't got it because we have absolutely no idea when you'll get it. I know. And, oh, I've just noticed another. Yep, Andy's going to make me one. I've got a long list of things that I want Andy to make me, specifically like little figurines of things that they don't usually sell. Uh, I actually have this by me because I'm supposed to be um, packing it, but I really, really uh, love this. And I think Joe will love it as well. That's a good. It's from, from Disneyland Paris, I think. I don't actually like the Terror of Terror, but I like Stitch. So. Yeah, Stitch is so cute. Um, yeah, Terror of Terror is one of those rides where I think it's soup, it's, the theming is awesome. I think it's so cool. Yeah, definitely. The actual ride just... Oh my gosh. Like, I'm not a fan of drop towers and I'm not yeah. a fan of things that are randomized because I would much rather know when I've like got to break like, myself. Yeah. So I, I, I've been on it once. I went on it on my 18th birthday trip and I just screamed the entire time. So. Oh my gosh. I can't even scream. Like I just, just start going yeah, like. It's like it takes your voice and you just, you look like you're screaming, but you're not. Nothing's coming out. And I find that really unsettling. But um, it's just so annoying about Mini because your website, I believe, says delayed June and ju delayed July. And of course, July is obviously going to be delayed until June's out. But when is June going to be out? Like It's only like three weeks until the next Mini and you don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to get postponed until August, because if you go on our shop, Disney, it says that Minnie is taking a summer vacation. So what does that mean? <laughs> it's going for June and July and coming back in August? 
like Minnie, this is not a good time to go on vacation anyway. Like, yeah. like <laughs> where's she gonna go? I know. Where, like, where is she going, Minnie? Mi you know, like Minnie, you're gonna be quarantined anyway. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen. My concern is how they're gonna have these releases back to back, or you know, we had all oh, that would be stressful. Yeah, and we had just also with like the ink and paint, like it got announced on our website, but it also says coming soon. So we have all these releases that are, you know, like postponed. And you know, the the Disney Castle collection, we didn't get the Frozen merchandise either. So yeah, yeah I, like I don't understand what's going on because it can't be a shipping issue. Because if Americans can order from the UK. Mm -hmm. then there's nothing wrong with shipping the stock from the UK to the US. Uh, yeah, I know. I don't think I had a restock as well that said the bag and the ears are coming out on the 3rd of August, I think. It was like a pre-order and they're going to make more stock. And I'm like, well, if you can do this for the UK, you can do this for the US because there was so much negativity. There's yeah. always negativity on the mini release day anyway. A lot of people saying we've missed out have got in you shouldn't be letting this happen but now there's like a cultural thing there's people having a go at americans and people having a go at british people and Disney should be doing everything they can to make sure that that doesn't happen and make sure that everybody can get the magic and oh yeah it wasn't magical that month whatsoever i do actually have mini and my pins here already but the mug hasn't arrived yet okay so i'm hoping that arrives tomorrow but did you just say that they're going to restock on July 3rd? Um, it was August 3rd, but it I think it was <sighs> Friday or Saturday. I actually like bought up a pre-order. Oh. And I think it disappeared once they must have got enough orders for how many they're going to make. But I don't understand why they did that. Because to me, with a pre-order, you leave it open for as long as possible to see what the demand is and then you make it from the demand because a pre-order proves that the stock isn't ready yet so you could right. make more but they yeah. want them to be limited i get that but they're a bit too limited and they won't tell you numbers i want to know exact numbers like how much percentage wise are they going to make more stock for next month yeah, because I feel like since it's limited release, I feel like they have more more wiggle room with limited release and there's mm -hmm. not a set amount announced. Technically, they can just make some more and put them out based on the demand, um, yeah. which, you know, brings me to this one point, you know, Loungefly has been releasing their, you know, mini jumbo pins. Yeah. Um, so these are LE 500. So um I had a little issue. I think I told you. So I have the Oliver pin, and um, oh, it's, really that one. Oh, it, it was I it's both so like that. So where is this taxi? I'm horrible at showing this. Well, where is this taxi on the taxi cab? It's supposed to light up. Mine does oh, not yeah. light up. It doesn't work. So it has this little oh. button on the back that you're supposed to press, and then it's supposed to light up. So I emailed them and I'm like, hey, like, um, there's really nothing wrong with my pin except for it doesn't light up. How do I change the battery? Because I couldn't, as I was like examining the pin, I couldn't find anywhere where I could, you know, replace it. Long story short, they said that, I guess it's like a known issue. So most of the people that got this, their pin was not working. So they did another order um, from China. So I guess these are really not LE 500 after all, yeah. if they're gonna order more. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, they were like, you have two options. We can give you a refund and you send this back, or we can give you a replacement and you send this back. And I'm like, <laughs> That is so annoying because then I have to go to FedEx or UPS or wherever. I have to pack yeah. this and send it when, honestly, I don't even care to send this back. I want you to tell me how to replace the battery. And I think yeah. that it is an inconvenience. And instead of making me then go out of my way to package this, which means I need packaging materials and then also drive somewhere to drop it off. Instead of doing that, just just make it right and, you know, just either just replace it uh, and just let me, you know, don't make me go somewhere else to get rid of this, yeah. you know? So in the end, I told yeah. them, you know what, just leave it alone. It's fine. I'll keep it as is. It's whatever. And they were like, well, you know, we'll give you a 15% code for your next um, purchase. I'm like, great. Thanks. It that puts probably you off as like shopping with them I guess though after this because that's really bad customer service 
I've had a few things come from Disney um, that have been broken or otherwise not great. And they've always just sent me a replacement and said, don't worry about that item, just keep it. And the one thing was a spirit jersey. A spirit jersey came with a blood stain on it. <gasps> now I said to them, I said, I can just wash it, but that's not the point. This has cost me £50. And they said, no problem. We'll send you out a new spirit jersey and keep that one. So I've got a new spirit jersey and we wash the blood out of the other one. And my mum's got a spirit jersey. But I would have understood if they told me to send that back. Because there really needed to be an investigation as to why it got shipped out. But that was a couple of years ago now. That was the Toy Story spirit jersey with the clouds. Okay. And it is one of my favourite spirit jerseys. But I don't agree with making you... um, send it back because like you say it's an inconvenience and especially in the middle of a pandemic you don't want to make unnecessary journeys they yeah. could at least do something where the courier that brings your new one takes away your old one the same way they do when you're getting a replacement mobile when my um samsung broke a few years ago they took away the old broken phone and gave me the replacement there and then so i didn't have to do anything yeah but it's interesting what part pioneer said i wonder whether that also happened with the income paint key because usually the income paint key is released the same day oh. that you get yours yeah I, I just wish they'd be transparent about what's happening because people want to know i mean who knows when you're going to get this now like should you pay ebay prices just in case like i don't condone it but i understand why people do yeah this i mean is just like making memories apart from with the delay but with the making more stock oh yeah March time they said they were making more from july and i was thinking well you could make some from april to be honest but that means that there were so few january february march and then there are loads of say november december and that isn't right that they know that some people still need January. Oh yeah, to the right. point that January is very, very guarded in my house. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy, and that you know, it it's true that that could also be ah, uh, that could also be you know one of the reasons why I think they might have also pushed back the U.S. releases. Not only maybe issues with actually getting some other birds, but also the issue with the bots. Bots are a problem. So I don't know if that's also a way of trying to, you know, once they are maybe able to drop some of these items at the actual store or the parks, yeah. maybe they're trying to delay it to where they can have some where people can actually buy in person and then the rest on the website just to kind of like deter, you know, all these bots. But, you know, yeah. going back to the Disney customer service. So I think I told you, I I ordered the Father's Day Belle and Marie's pin from yeah. Shop Disney. And my pin, it 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 came like the backer card, it looked like someone went like this and it was like all crumpled. And then there was like a scuff mark on Belle's neck. So I called the I um I emailed Disney at first and I wasn't sure if I had read the, had the right email. So I ended up calling them. And the lady on the phone was super nice. She was like, Oh, you know, we're sorry, we'll send you a replacement because we still have some of those pins. And I was like, Well, what do I do with this one? And she's like, Oh, you don't have to do anything it's whatever you know don't it's fine next thing i know the next day i had an email from disney and they were like nope we want that pin back and i'm like okay it's fine but you literally told me like less than 24 hours ago that i could just keep it what if i would have just given this pin to like a neighbor or something because you were like Mm-hmm. you know then then what and then um so they sent me the the you know a label and then i was like just to let you know it's a little inconvenient for me because like you said we're in the middle of a pandemic so now i need to go to mm-hmm. ups because they me a ups label they really wanted this pin back they were like oh we'll send someone to your house to pick it up and i'm like well that's great but guess what i work from 8 30 to 5 30 and sometimes until yeah. 7 and ups is only there for so long so i might not be home so what i had to do was that i had to package off the pin and i had to go drop it off at a ups drop box um which is fine it, it, it's not a big deal but it's just so annoying and inconvenient because First, they told me it's fine. And luckily, I still had the pin. I could have just given it to, you know, my niece or something, you know. Yeah. And then you're like, no, we want this back. And I'm like, well, then then why? You, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I feel like they're yeah. dropping the ball with their customer service. And not only that, their packaging and shipping has been so crazy. I mean, which is, I'm assuming why this pin was all like messed up. I know that 
Day Trip in Disney is on the chat. She actually just had a video yesterday talking about like just packaging. You know, I actually just got, you know, the pins that were released recently, the new I collect and so on. And they came in this oh, big yeah. box and they were not like wrapped or anything. They were just like loose in the box. So my I collect pin was separate from the backer card. The, the rubber backings were like all over the place. And I'm actually missing one of the rubber backings because they just toss that in there like it's you know, whatever. I don't know if you have the same experiences in the UK with their shipping and packaging, but I feel like they're really dropping the, the ball on that. And, you know, yeah. a part pioneer just said their frozen castle pin was broken uh, and they told them to give it to a charity. Well, in, in the US, they want it back. <laughs> I really struggle with packaging because um, they have gotten rid of the option to have next day delivery, which I often did um, with things like that. Oh, you back. Um, yeah, um, I, I just um, had to close the camera real quick. So I had to adjust my headset. <laughs> the um, the next day delivery option has been gone all through this pandemic. And I completely understand because they're taking up to two weeks. So they don't really want a lot of people asking for next day delivery. But you pay three ninety five as standard for shipping. And say you order the pins. I ordered the pins. They come in a bubble mailer. You order the plush on its own, it comes in a bag. So I keep getting minis that have bent ears. But if I ordered the mini and the pins, I would lose out on the pins because of how quickly they sell out. And mm -hmm. because my mom orders the plush and the mug, it always comes in a box. And those boxes are perfect for packing like my really small plushes, like my Yufufis, tiny big feet, things like that. So I am really grateful for those boxes. But when my June mini came and her ears were a bit bent, I was really considering emailing Disney and saying, can you not make it as standard that limited edition plushes go in a box? Because I am sick to death of paying so much money for my limited edition plush to come damaged, basically. Oh, Joe's here. I saw. <laughs> hey, baby. Made it. He's here to troll me and say chicken nuggies basically because you know, you know <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, but it's true yeah. yeah I would love for my mini to come in a box I mean I don't mind when a cuddlies comes in a bag because cuddlies are really soft anyway and they don't have anything on them but with mini you've got the bow and sometimes she's got frills on her skirt I mean this one's kind of a satin the June is I haven't filmed the video of it yet but you just don't want a creased dress either because a creased dress is really hard to sort out. I've got a creased dress on June and I think my It's a Small World one is creased as well. And when they're patterned, you really don't want a line down the pattern. So I do need to work out a way to sort it. But whenever I Facebook Disney customer service, they take about three days to respond. So I don't know whether it's worth it. Yeah. There should be a way to request something as well you know the same way that you can request that they leave your package with a neighbor if you're not in you should be allowed to say please put it in a box if you don't have to pay any extra and they decide for you what it comes in it should come in a box really but oh, yeah. if your pins are coming in a box and they're still coming damaged there's no help there's really no help yeah, like, it's just, I don't know, because I feel like here in the U.S., they come from different warehouses. There's one in Maryland, mm -hmm. and then there's other ones, and I forget what, what state. Um, but it just depends, because I've gotten pins in a box. I've gotten pigs in a bubble mailer. I've gotten the Minnie Mouse main attraction in an actual bag, like a plastic bag with no mm -hmm. no padding. So they're very hit and miss. And then one of those things, which, you know, they trip in this thing was saying on, on her video, which I totally agree with her, is that, you know, it is so stressful to go through these releases. You know, you're there early, you know, 10 minutes early, like you said, you know, it, it's really stressful to get these items, you know, and then you're you're paying for these items don't like and they're not like cheap you know so like let's say you got the plush the mug and the pins that's how much like almost a hundred dollars right there um i think it's about 65 if we get all of them together okay but then if like the people get in the lounge fly backpacks as well they cost 65 pounds here if if you get a damaged lounge, lounge fly bag they won't have a replacement because they're limited and they're 
worth nothing once they're damaged, basically. Yeah. But so back to Park Pioneer's point about delivery services, I actually have no problem with Hermes because um, we actually have a really good rapport with our courier. We always get the same guy. He's absolutely lovely. He knows it's for me. Even if a Disney parcel comes and it has my mum's name on it, he'll go, this is for you, Lizzie. I just know it's for you. Oh, um, that's sweet. We have had a couple of boxes come damaged and the ink and paint key came in a box that had been retaped. So I was really worried that the key would get stolen as that has been unfortunately happening to some people. But I just have a really good courier and I'm really going to miss him when we move. Oh. I've also had keys come in bags as well, which I think is ridiculous because they don't have any bubble wrap around them. Mm, and to yeah. put them in a bag they could so easily snap i mean i've i've got the income bank key here um because i did a video with it yesterday and like the tag well, the tag's a little bit um bent but i take it off anyway but the key is fine but this one came in the box the one i managed to get for if you can't get it um that was the one that came in the box that was all taped up so yeah. i was really worried it wasn't going to be there especially after I was told three times that I hadn't placed an order when I had and the money had gone. I Yeah, I, I know. So that's one of those things that after we go through all that and we pay all that, you, the, the, you know, at least we expect our stuff to, to arrive there in one piece. Um, there you go. Cameron says, yes, my yeah. last two pins that came in a box were damaged. I need so, to watch I mean, that video about packaging. Yeah, like I, I totally, I, I, I just relate so much when she said that. And I don't want to make this and like to just some wine fest <laughs> where I'm just like <laughs> complaining. But it's one of those things that as collectors, even with like Funko Pops, it happens too. Like sometimes when you order from a certain place, they don't come in a sorter box. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just one of those things that as collectors, we all experience, you know, one way or another. I think um, one of the big companies that people make jokes about as well is Amazon. I recently saw a TikTok where they were selecting a box to put the item in and they chose a box that was about 10 times the size of the product and they put nothing extra in. But that is so true. Like I've had CDs arrive where the little pieces of plastic that keep the CD in have snapped. So the CD is just like moving around in the case. Oh, no. Because packaging, I know packaging costs extra, but if you're paying a lot of money for a product, I mean, the Minnie Mouse is, have gone up in price from the Mickey memories. And I understand why it's because of the detail, but I'm paying more money to have it arrive damaged or at least not in the condition I would like it to be in. As a plush collector, I'm usually not one of those people that looks them over in the store to decide which one's the best, but I would still like their ears to be okay because Mickey yeah. and Minnie are known for their ears. So you don't want one like this and then one like this. I have <laughs> one of those. It frustrates me. <laughs> I think Joe's came like that this month. It was a bit like that way. <laughs> like, yeah, like when I did your plush tag, which I, by the way, I thought it was brilliant. And then there's some more, a lot of more people doing the plush tag now, which is my first time seeing a plush tag on YouTube. So I thought it was so cool um, that I, I was able to be a part of it. But the one Mickey plush that I used, um, you know, like you saw in the video, like her ears or his ears were like, <laughs> You know, and I'm in your there's nothing you can do either. Like I've tried putting heavy things on their ears, but they're actually quite tough once they've been bent out of shape. That's pretty much it. So when I was packing my Mickey memories, I've got layers of bubble wrap between all of them and they're actually lying in the box with like um their feet underneath someone else's head. So like this sort of leverage. Um I didn't explain that very well, but they're basically like top and tail, like you would in a bed, I suppose. Um, one more thing I was thinking about with Minnie. I'm in Beth Long's Facebook group, which I think you added me to, Mel, so that which I could one? get some um, Beth Long's pickup group. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, she was picking up magic bands for the January Minnie. And then all of a sudden, after February, the magic bands just disappeared. And I know the parks have been closed, but surely they would still make the stuff considering it was advertised that Walt Disney World would get a Minnie Mouse, the main attraction magic band as well. Hmm. Like, I yeah. started to believe that I'd, like, dreamt it. <laughs> I I don't remember. I I don't remember much about that, but I, but, the, but the magic band did come out, right? 
on... I'm pretty sure the January one did, and then I didn't see anything after that because she, like, put an open call for who wanted it picking up. And yeah. then after that, and the clo- the parks weren't closed in February, so I don't understand where they disappeared to, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. But, you know, talking about parks, so, Lizzie, which one would you say is your home park? It would have to be Disneyland Paris for me because I think I've been to Disneyland Paris 15 times. That's awesome. Um, like we've, I don't think we've ever gone twice in one year, but um, there were a few times where we didn't go for years and then there were times when we went every single year. Um, so I've been quite a lot. Um, and then I've been to California three times, um, Florida twice. So I've actually been to California more times than Florida. And I've been to Tokyo once. So I'd definitely say that Paris is my home park. But I think if I wanted to live near any particular park and call it my home park, I would definitely move to California. Like it feels more homely than Disneyland Paris does, if that makes sense. Okay. And if you were to compare Disneyland Paris, Disneyland California and Disney World, what would you say are the things that set them apart like right now you're saying that you would probably pick Disneyland over Disney World well like what would you say are like the main differences between just really maybe the feel that the parks give you between the three like what would you say are like the main difference in between those three parks at least for you um I think because obviously most people usually just say the main argument is that Walt Disney World is bigger and therefore better and I I do understand that it's bigger and it has a lot more going on but for someone with anxiety, like I find the whole reservation system, even the old reservation system, I'm not even talking about the new one. I find that really, really stressful. But you had to know where you were eating 180 days in advance. You had to know what rides you wanted to go on 60 days in advance. I just found the whole thing really stressful. Whereas California is a much more relaxed feel. It also feels more homely because there's so much of Walt there. Like I did the walking in Walt Disneyland footsteps tour where we went inside his apartment and things like that um and it's just more I hate to say it feels more authentic because a lot of people do say that Florida feels more like they're trying to make as much money as they possibly can out of you and as much as I love it and I want to go back I'm not looking forward to that sort of busy feel I think it would be better if I was more local because when you're British and you are only going for those say two weeks you feel like you have to do everything you've got to do everything or else you didn't have a good enough trip whereas if you're local like say Jodie and Laura they can just pop into Epcot for a date night and I really really love that and I'm really jealous of that and then Disneyland Paris for me because it's so much smaller and it's missing some of the main roads like it doesn't have um, things like mine trains that Florida has and things like that um, it doesn't have a Matterhorn thing like the kind of roads I, I've started to like at the American Park it's just more beautiful like the, the castle is my favourite thing about this one Paris for sure but okay. like, they've also put a lot into the scenery and like the foliage I guess the word is like the trees and the plants and everything like this one Paris just feels really aesthetically pleasing that's probably the best that's what I was going to say. Okay, yeah. so mainly, so visually, Disneyland Paris, it's just more something to like take in, you know, yeah. like and to admire. And then the the American parks are more of like where you kind of can you can go, I guess, get more into what you know mm-hmm. being a Disney fan is all about. And if that makes sense, because yeah. I I think um, Andy and Joe would agree as well. Like Disneyland Paris isn't perfect, especially. Um, food service like you can literally be waiting for two hours when it's not busy at all just to get a burger and then the burger's cold so they're not perfect american customer service is a lot better but i just really like going to paris because it's a lot easier for me like yeah um, I, I don't actually know how long it takes you to get to florida but um it's a 40 minute flight from england to france and then it's like an hour in a taxi to disneyland paris so i just find it really easy to get to yeah, no, definitely. Like for me, oh no, the quick service is so slow. It's almost like an oxymoron in a way. Yeah. <laughs> quick service is slow. <laughs> um, so bad. I mean, we queued for some donuts 
for about an hour and a half the one time and I was just stood there going I don't even want it anymore <laughs> oh, but you know no. you've got to eat so yeah, I mean, I'll definitely want to go to Disneyland Paris at some point. I, I, I do think that, you know, I just want to be able to take all of that in, you know, the castle mm -hmm. and then just everything. But you see with me, I've been to both Disneyland um, California and Disney World. I've only been to California once last year. We did Disneyland and DCI. And I think it's great. I... um. I get what you're saying about it being more relaxed. I, I, I understand also about how maybe going to Disney World is a little more stressful because I feel like there's always like a, like a lot of people there and there's just four different mm -hmm. parks and so much to do. And the way that I see, you know, the dining reservations and the fast passes is just a way of, even though it seems stressful to me, it just feels like a way of making it easier on people because if yeah. you're able, because it's always so crowded, if you can just do your dining reservations, you know, uh, 180 days in advance and your fast pass is 60 days in advance, as long as you're staying on like property and, and whatnot, like I feel like that just makes it a little easier because they're always so busy. I, um, I think Disneyland, like you said, was, it definitely had that more like relaxing feel to it. And also that mm -hmm. it's also magical that that's where Walt actually was like yeah like like I think you told me before like yeah it's you know Walt was like walking around here so it does have that really magical element but I I think because I've been to Disney World a lot more I'm kind of used to having all those extra options the different parks I absolutely love Epcot that is my favorite mm -hmm. uh, park in Disney World. I love Spaceship Earth. I love all the different festivals, which I know they do in DCA, you know, uh, the Food and Wine Festival and whatnot. Oh, Joe's got to go. Bye, Joe. Bye. <laughs> he Chicken must dog. have been on his break at work. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, that's why I, I think I, I like Disney World better just because I feel like I have more stuff to do there. Um, yeah. It's more of variety and not necessarily, just not that more is necessarily better, but I think some of the rides, um, like, uh, you know, the Splash Mountain ride in Disney World, like, um, it's, uh, I think it's a little better than the one in Disneyland. The one in Disneyland to me felt a little bare. Uh, but on, on the other hand, their Pirates ride is a lot better than the one in Disney World. Um, so they both have, you know, their things. But I think because I love Epcot so much, um, I definitely love yeah. like Disney World a, a little better. And I also love the Cinderella Castle. I think it's so yeah pretty um but I, I do think also disneyland is, is is awesome when i went to dca and i saw the ferris wheel i was just like oh, it's there because it's one of those like iconic pieces to like disneyland you know just like the ferris wheel and i was so excited to actually like look at it in person and actually go on the ferris wheel did you get on the ferris wheel yes i um found it quite scary because i'm quite scared <laughs> of heights we went on the stationary one, not one of the ones that like swings. Um, and I was still quite scared because it still moved a bit because obviously it's got to, but I don't like things like that. But my mom absolutely loves Ferris wheels. Aww. You know how when you go to a big city and there's a Ferris wheel that you can see all of the city, she likes going on those as well. So uh, so were you one of the rocking uh, like little gondolas on the Ferris wheel? Yeah, it's one of the little ones that like barely moves, not the ones that go like that. We, um, we had the one that you like, have brought. one above you that does that and oh god i hated it <laughs> we, we went on that one like um it's it's definitely a little scary oh when it was like moving but I, I thought it was so like a neat experience i mean and i don't like going upside down oh that's a no yeah. for laura i don't like going upside down on roller coasters but somehow i got on the incredible coaster did you did you get on that one i really loved the incredible coaster because the thing is um say if we went well, when we went in 2018, I wouldn't go on anything like that. And then um, in 2019, Joe and I got um, a Merlin annual pass. So we started going to Orphan Towers a lot more. So I started doing rides that went upside down. So when we went in 2019, I did the Incredicoaster about four times, I think, and I really enjoyed it. But what do you think of Cars Land? Because that's actually my favorite part of the Oh, year. I loved it. I, I thought it was so cool, Radiator Springs. It was just so pretty. And I just feel like I'm in like another world. Similar to when I yeah. went to the Wizarding World, Harry Potter Universal. It's like yeah. its own little world. And it's so cute. And um, while the ride itself reminds me of Test Track a little bit in Epcot, it's definitely its own thing. And I love I that you're- I that. Huh? 
I need to go on that. We went to Florida in 2015 and I didn't go on things like that back then. So I have like this long list of things I want to go on. Um, Epcot's actually my mum's favourite park as well because she really loves figment and I can see you've got a little figment behind oh, you. Oh yeah, oh there is he right there. Uh, it's yeah. kind of hard to point but there. <laughs> I'm just jealous of the Skyliner, I really wanted that pop. Uh, I think they still had some. Last time I went in February, they still had some Skyliner uh, pops there, which is another thing. You got to try the Skyliner. I was definitely scared to get on it because when it first opened back in, I think, September or so, um, there was a little, like, you know, accident that happened. Yeah. So I was so scared to get on it. But um when we tried it in February, um, you know, the gondolas are a lot bigger than they look. I thought they were going to be like really small because they look small from like a distance. And when yeah. you see videos, they're actually quite large. Um, and you can fit, I don't know if it's like like uh, six people or eight people. I don't know. You can sit. Oh, yeah. a lot of people there. It's, it's pretty uh, comfortable. Um, it is kind of scary because you're just, you know, just hanging by like this like wire, this ginormous gondola. But it's pretty. There's a lot of like cool ventilation there. Like, uh, it's 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 nice. It's, it gets breezy in there. Um, but I don't know if it was because of the accident. But they have like a little emergency kit there too. So if you were to get stuck, it has like water and all these like extra you know mm -hmm. things. Um, but I'm thinking that if I'm gonna ride the Skyliner, hopefully it's on a day that's like breezy out. Hi, Cameron. <laughs> if, if anything happens, oh, hi, Cameron. I think it might just be like. Um law i guess because um open towers has something similar to a skyliner i think they call it a sky rider but obviously you're not looking at anything as magical as florida you're looking at usually like abandoned little rides around the park which i do love because they just sort of they don't hide it away so you can still see it and i'm really interested in abandoned things um but yeah they have emergency kits in there okay um, which makes me feel a little bit better because i know that I wouldn't like die of thirst or hunger but at the same time I'm like well it kind of makes you think that they know that they're not going to be able to get to you quickly like in my old job if um, a lift broke an elevator broke it could take four hours for them to get you out wow. so I would never go in lifts and I still don't because I know that it could take four hours for the engineer to get there to fix it so it's just a no from me um, since you're talking about Splash Mountain earlier, I don't want to talk about the news this week, just in case, because we're nearly at the end of the hour. Yeah. But I've only been on Splash Mountain once, and Joe got so soaked. He got soaked this before man, the right? big drop. Yeah. He actually got um, soaked before the big drop. Like, there's a drop before that, isn't there? And then you're inside, and you sort of go like that, and you got really soaked. So you can actually see through his shirt in the Splash Mountain picture, and he refused to go on ever again so we probably won't be trying out the new ride but so parts of the caribbean as well disneyland paris has the best parts of the caribbean because it has I agree. three drops i think um mm, i forget but i know it's there's a lot more in their rides but you know what um this the splash mountain in disneyland is like the different than the one in disney world for starters oh, yeah. in in disney world you sit side by side rather than like oh yeah of course do yeah and not only that you don't get soaked in disney world you might get a little a little bit of water once you're done you know you're once you do the big splash and then like yeah. it, it goes around there's like a little like waterfall and sometimes that kind of splashes you know you yeah. a little bit but you don't yeah. get soaked it's funny because when we went to disneyland we went with my co my coworker and her husband they had never been to disneyland either and i don't think they had been to disney world so so we were like, oh, Splash Mountain is so fun. And we were like, you know what? You guys have never written it. You guys can sit in the front. Oh, my gosh. We did not know that you get soaked in Disneyland. They, it was like 60-some degrees when we went there, uh, Fahrenheit, and uh, which is kind of chilly. And they were soaked, yeah. like you said with Joe. Like, their, their stuff was, like, see-through. They were soaked head to toe. And I had no idea that it was like that in Disneyland because it's not like that in Disney World. Yeah. And we felt so bad because they were probably thinking that we were being just, like, mean. I'd be like, you guys are in the front. Enjoy it. But we didn't know they were going to get soaked. Um, but that is one of the also one of the differences differences between yeah. the Disneyland Splash Mountain and Disney World like you don't get as it's weird you'd expect that because Florida tends to have higher temperatures more often in the year it would make more sense to get soaked on Splash Mountain in 
Walt Disney World because you'll just so easily dry off. But yeah, but yeah. in Adam dry in Florida. Yeah, because you don't get you might get a little wet, like I said, but you don't get soaked. The only ride where you get pretty wet is um, I don't know if you went to Animal Kingdom when you went to Disney World, but they have the Cali River Rapids. Yeah, <laughs> there you get wet. That's one of my mum's favorites. Um, we also went on I don't know what it's called in Universal. Is it a Popeye ride? Yeah, it's yeah, a- and we were so soaked so- that you could see straight through my mum's shirts, and my dad had to like hide her from everybody for the whole day while she was drying off because um we went in November and we didn't dry off as quickly as we expected to so there was a while where mom was a little bit embarrassed oh but as you do get soaked there that's that's right it's funny the Siskateers Mary saying that they were extra <laughs> soaked on Splash Mountain and Disneyland because yeah they don't tell you that when you go there for yeah. the first time from I Disney mean, World you don't know I was that worried. I was a little worried because they were giving out the clock bags so I said to Joe I was like oh stick the phones in there and then put them in my bag and then they'll be extra safe and joe actually went ahead of me he was actually the first person in the uh flume log flume mm-hmm. whatever yeah. so um and again we didn't know that you got that so so we didn't know um and i don't like that it's one by one because i didn't feel safe joe actually went first so that um he could stop me from feeling like i was falling out but then he oh. felt like he was falling out which was really sweet of him, but now he's got this really embarrassing picture where you can like see through his shirt. Um, but yeah, in Disney World, like it's not like that. So um, next time you guys go, I don't know if with the retheming, basically the ride's still going to be the same. But if it is, and you you get to sit side by side, um, which is funny because that's another difference. Like I am not a fan of Space Mountain, just because. Oh, yeah. Just because I feel like I can't really brace for the turns because I can't see where I'm going and I feel like some of the turns yeah. are a little a little rough. Um, so Space Mountain in Disneyland, you get to sit side by side, and in Disney World, it's yeah. one in front of the so it's kind of yeah. like differences with Splash Mountain. But yeah. I prefer the one in Disneyland over the one in Disney World. If I have to go on Space Mountain, I'd rather do that one because I feel like I feel a little safer, like you said, even though the ride only goes, I think it's like 35 miles per hour, just because yeah. I can't really see, I can quite uh, brace for it for the turns, you know? Yeah, I've only done Disneyland and Tokyo Disneyland, um, but Tokyo Disneyland was really funny because we were right at the back and there were some girls at the front that kept screaming every time it dropped or turned the corner, so I knew when to brace, so it was really fun, so I'd always just like going nearer the back because especially if you can see a little bit because there's usually a little bit of light but just not a lot you would see the the heads in front of you go lower so I always try to go nearer the back I think it works a lot better although I'm not sure whether because you're all in front of each other you wouldn't be able to see the car in front of you I'm not sure maybe but um you know another one of the rides uh this one ride i think you said you do like it matterhorn in disneyland my whole it hurts but i do it (laughs) like it was so rough like i felt like i was 95 years old getting off that ride (laughs) like and it's so low as well you have to like pretty much sit on the floor of the vehicle so it's not even comfortable to sit in before they start throwing you around like a rag doll yeah, I mean, it's still, it's fun. I definitely wanted to do it because, you know, I, I've, I've never, um, you know, I had never done it before and I wanted to check it out. But yeah, definitely rough. And um, I guess I was wrong with the mileage on Space Mountain. I guess it's 25 miles per hour. So I guess it doesn't really go that fast. But because I'm, I guess I'm such a it baby. It feels like more though. Cause, um, it does. I was, I was too scared to do Disneyland Paris. So I've never done Disneyland Paris. Because for some reason, I thought it did 60 miles an hour and it doesn't. I think it does about 30. Um, and Disneyland Paris is actually the only Spice Mountain that goes upside down, which also put me off. Ooh. So um, I have been told you don't feel like you're going upside down, but I would know because, you know, my hair and everything, it would start moving. So I would know whether I'm going upside down or not. Oh, I didn't know that. That makes it scarier yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for the heads up. Now I know. <laughs> Uh, that's what you I can usually head. tell by a restraint, I think. Oh, um, like when it goes like this. You find like, yeah, if you've got one like that, you're like, what are you doing to me? Where are we going to go? We're going to go upside down. So I, I can mm. usually tell. 
good to know because I'm not super crazy about roller coasters, but I always tell my husband, like, I'll compromise with you. If it goes upside down, most likely I'm not going to get on it. But if it doesn't, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, you know, I'll go on it. Like, like that is our compromise with Tower of Terror. I don't really enjoy it very much, but because it doesn't go upside down, he's always like, well, it doesn't go upside down. I'm like, oh, fine. I'll get on it. Yeah. But but good to know. Now I know I can be like, you know, I'm not going on Space Mountain in Disneyland Paris because I don't want to go upside down. And I can't see. What if I fall? You know, <laughs> I don't know. What if that thing opens? And I'm just, I'm just being extra right now. But <laughs> the one ride I want to try, but I'm not sure whether I could, is um, Expedition Everest. Like it looks really extreme. But it's- I do like things that go backwards. I like taking trains backwards because I just feel a lot more comfortable when I'm going backwards rather than forwards because I feel like I can't feel the speed as much. Yeah. Um, I've been on, um, you know, Spirit and Everest. You know, we, we always go. I like it. I don't mind it. Um, but I can't go on it back to back. If I go on it back to back, I'll get a headache. Um, let me see this thing just open up on my computer. Um, but I, I think it's a cool ride. Like, I'll get on it. I enjoy it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no back to back for me because then I'll get yeah. a headache. <laughs> The only thing I like to do back to back is uh, it's a small world. I can just uh, keep running around because it gets stuck in your head anyway. So you might as well have it sung to you rather than it going around in your head. So go yeah, back I, on it straight yeah. away. Like I also love um, living with the land in Epcot. Have you done that one? Yeah. I love like, that. So relaxing. Yeah, I just I think it's really interesting. Like I love the educational type things as well. Um, and like I said, my mum loves Figment, so we always go on Figment as well. But I don't remember what Figment used to be like, but my mum went in 1989 and she went in 2000 with me and then 2015 with me. And she said it was so much different in 1989 because I think that was when the Dream Finder was still in it. Okay. So I don't remember. Um, Disney rides change all the time and we just need to be on board with it, basically. <laughs> Yeah, they're constantly changing. I mean, Tower of Terror in Disneyland is now Guardians of the Galaxy. So yeah. um, a lot Joe's of things. Joe's been on that. He says it's really good. Yeah. Um, I, I went on it too when we went to Disneyland. Um, it's uh, definitely, you know, it's cool. I like that it's so, like, alive. There's so much, like, music going on. And it's, like, happy. But then again, mm-hmm. like, you drop right away. Like, it doesn't, like, ease you into oh, really? it. Like, I was, like Tower of Terror, you know, you get the little thing and it goes around and you know that at some point you're going to drop. I, I think, I don't know if they do like Tower of Terror where each ride is different, you know. Um, yeah. But I remember getting on and dropping right away. Like it didn't ease me into this. Like, whoop. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> we went on a ride in Thought Park in the UK where there was a drop straight away. So it's called Saw. And I don't know whether um, Park Pioneer has been on it, but I don't actually like the Saw film. So I was like dead against going on it. And Joe was like, oh, come on, there's only this, um, there's only one drop. And honestly, Mel, if you go onto YouTube and look at Saw, you go up like this and then straight down like that. Oh, and, then, no. and it was horrible. But that wasn't the thing. Like you were, you got into the car, you drove around and then straight away there was a drop before that big drop. So I was like psyching myself up for this big drop that was meant to be a few minutes away. And straight away we dropped and I just came off it crying. And ever since I've sat on this little bench and because it's a sore film, it says oh. something in blood on the bench, but I just sit there and wait for Joe to come back. Oh my gosh. It, we had a similar experience. I've, have you heard of the of Six Flags? Great Adventure Six Flags? It's like another... Yeah, I've heard of Six Flags. So, so gone, you need to go. So I went to, the, there's one in New Jersey, Great Adventure Six Flags, and they have this ride called King Da Ka. So yeah. this was, I think, I don't know if it's still the fastest... Uh, Roller, fastest, tallest roller coaster. Um, I think in the either the U.S. or the East Coast. Um, I forget. Oh the thing is that this thing goes straight up, straight down. And I was like, it doesn't go upside down, but like, it like you're literally like ninety degrees yeah. down. Like so, like That's like worse like, than going oh, upside down. Thing. That is. Yeah, like um, the thing is that we went, we were getting on the ride, right? And they put all these restraints on you, like like I feel like something bad's gonna happen because I have all these yeah. straps on me, and I'm like. 
you know, and I was telling my husband, I'm like, I want to get off. Do you, do you know when you put your strains, they restraints, they 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 check you to make sure everybody's like, you know, yeah, uh, ready to go. So uh, I was telling my husband, like, I want to get off, and he goes like, okay. So he tries, he makes, he, he pretends like he's calling like like a like a one of the people there. And he goes like, excuse me, like really low where nobody can hear him. He's like, excuse me, and he's like, well, I guess we're going. I was. Like petrified. Yeah. When we went on in King Daka, after I was done with the ride, I was like shaking and I was like, oh, I'm not getting on this ever again. Uh, just because yeah. I'm such a chicken. But, uh, but I guess I tend I to just try something once and then if I don't like it, it doesn't matter who I'm with. I'm not going to go on it, even if my first time wasn't while they were there. Like, you know, some people are like, oh, I won't get on this if you won't. But if I know I don't like it, I'm like, I'm really sorry. But no, it's like, um, when I was younger, I was scared of Star Tours, and we only went on it again on our last trip. I think me and Joe went on it, and I actually really enjoyed it. So I don't know why I came off it crying when I was nine. I think it's because in Disneyland Paris, um, Star Tours alternate between English and French, and I must have had the French one, and I mustn't have known what was going on, because obviously if it's playing in English, you'll know when to brace yourself, and I just didn't. So I was really scared and I was also scared of they had a weird Armageddon experience that they just closed based on the film and I didn't like that either. I don't like things that I can't understand and I suppose a little girl that didn't know French was very confused. So Oh, even like it even being an adult if you don't know what's going on and so yeah. like you're like, uh <laughs> Yeah. Oh. It's it's usually good to go on non Disney rides with Joe, like if we go on one in this country. He's usually gone on it before, so he can say, like, brace yourself now. But when we go to Disney and it's a ride I've never been on, then it's a little bit scary the first time. But if I like it, I continue to go on it. Like Mine Train, I absolutely love Mine Train. Oh, I love Mine Train, too. It's such a sweet, cute ride. And the roller coaster is not, like, extreme or anything. It's, like, no. super fun. Like, um, have you been there since they opened uh, Toy Story Land? No. No, um, the Slinky Dog Dash. That roller coaster is so. I really want to go on that. Awesome. It like, it reminds me of Mind Train in a way, where it's such a cute, fun roller coaster. Like, um, oh, it's I, I actually really like that one a lot. Yeah, I think with um Mind Train, like even if you didn't like it, I think it's worth it to do the animatronics. Like that's kind of my argument with Splash Mountain as well. I don't like the drop. But it is worth it to see all the characters inside. And yeah. I am excited to see how they change it. Although I am the side where I wanted to see an Empress New Groove ride. Because I thought it would, the drop would work. I'm not sure you can implement a drop into a princess ride. But I'm excited to see what they do. Yeah, I'm I sure they can. I prefer Florida now you said that you don't get as wet. Yeah, you don't get as wet at all. Like, <laughs> uh, but I, I like it. I, I think that I actually I go on all the rides in Disney World. Um, even the ones that I'm a little like I don't say scared of, but I'm like like crazy. But I get on like this one thing about Disney. Like, I feel like the rides everybody can ride at least just once. Like you yeah. said, even, even if just to try it out. Um, yeah. like I wasn't super crazy about the uh, Rock and Roller Coaster because it loops. Um, yeah. but. But I, you know, we last time we went, I, I went on it because my husband really likes it. And I mean, really in Disney World, like you really can go on any ride. Um, you know, even yeah. if you do it once, like it's not the the rides are not that extreme where yeah. only a certain group of people of a certain age can enjoy it. I feel like the rides in Disney World, everybody can try at least once, or for the most part, mm -hmm. unless you have like a health condition that really, you know, prevents yeah. from like, doing it. My dad can't go on many anymore, but for the most part, you know, like Six Flags try and be the most extreme rides that the world has ever seen. Um, but Disney still want you to have fun. They don't want to, you know, they don't want people throwing up when they've just got off the ride, because that's not mm -hmm. a very Disney experience. So mm -hmm. I know that it can never get that bad. So yeah. I'm a lot more um, able to try things there. Like, I don't argue as much in Disney. Like, I just go, yeah, let's try it. Yeah, that's how I feel, too. Like, when we go to Six Flags, it's another story. Um, but, uh, but yeah, in Disney, there's really not that much arguing about the rides. Because, like you said, like, yeah, like 
it can be too crazy because it's Disney. Like you said, Disney doesn't want people just passing out on the rides or anything, you know? Yeah. yeah. So we've gone way over our hour today. But I thank know. you all so much for joining us for our first one. Yes. Next week is going to be on Mel's channel. And then the week after, it will be back on my channel. And we're just going to run it like that. So make sure you subscribe to Mel as well. You've dropped the link in the chat, haven't you? I dropped I bo dropped both of our links on the chat just in case, you know, we have people that, you know, it is their first time on your channel too. They can definitely subscribe. So within the chat, we have a link to your channel and a link to my channel. So, so yeah, no, definitely, you know, thank you for, for doing this with me. I'm so excited. It's going to be really uh, fun. I know it was so fun that we are like an hour and 14 minutes in uh, to live mm -hmm. with all of our friends. Yeah. Thanks so much, everybody, for being here. Park Pioneer, the Jody and Laura Life, you know, everyone that's here, the Siskateers. I know they trip in Disney was here earlier. Uh, Mishy Mashy, you know, Joe, you know, if I miss someone, I'm sorry, but, you know, thank you so much. Everyone. Disney Dan, you've missed Disney Dan. <laughs> yeah, Disney Dan was here earlier, too. So. And, and, you know, and uh, one of you, Musketeer, was here, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. We really do thank appreciate you. it. Lizzie, what do you have coming up this week on your channel? Oh, I only uploaded it earlier. What have I got? Um, Tuesday, I've got my June favorites because it's the okay. end of June on Tuesday. Um, Friday, I've got my birthday gifts from James at Pimpel. And Saturday is the first of my packing videos. I'm just packing my small plushes, like the Yufufis and things like that. These packing videos might get a little bit boring because it's just me packing things, but I just figured it's content. It's something that I'm doing. It's a big part of my life and I want to take everyone along. So what are you doing now? Um, and you know, not only that, but like if there's people that are also moving right now and they're wondering how should they pack their collectibles, they yeah. can definitely get some ideas from what you're doing because it's always, you know, good to see, get ideas of like, oh, Lizzie is using, you know, um, certain kind of box and it works for her. So it actually yeah. could help a lot of people that are going through the same stuff or they don't quite maybe know what to do with their collectibles. So, I mean, yeah. it's definitely, you know, definitely going to be some, you know, helpful tips for people. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, with me, I have a collaboration coming out on July 4, which is, you know, Independence Day in the US. Yeah. Um, I have a box swap with Mary from the Siskateers. We have our girl power box swap. So, we uh, traded two Funko Pops and two limited edition pins. And because it's girl power themed, uh, we were sending each other either Disney or Marvel or Star Wars, you know, female characters. So uh, it was a lot of fun uh, doing that. So that's coming up on July 4th. Um, and as usual, you know, I have my uh, my videos Wednesdays and Saturdays. at um, I drop them in the morning between 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Uh, Florida time. Um, so we have that going on. And of course, you know, Sundays, now we have our live at 11 a.m. Florida time on my channel uh, next Sunday and then the, like you said the following one on your channel and so on so a lot of uh, you know Disney content uh, coming up your way or everyone's way <laughs> and it's really really lovely that so many people have come to support us because I didn't start promoting this until yesterday we've been discussing it for a while but I've just been so busy with packing that I didn't have time to say look we're going live today so Thank you to everyone that did join in, even if you just popped in for a little while. And to everyone who will hopefully watch on the replay as well, thank you for watching. There's going to be a playlist on my channel so that you can find every single one just in case you missed them. Mm -hmm. That's right. So unless there's anything else, that's it from us. Now, do you have anything left? No, no, that's it. You know, I hope that everybody has a great weekend. You know, the week starts in less than 24 hours will be Monday. <laughs> uh, but it will happen sooner for me. <laughs> that's right. Yep. So I hope everybody had a great weekend. Everybody has a wonderful week and we'll see you guys again on Sunday. Right. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.